The New York adventure began as we arrived at the Albany Airport and drove south down the River Road along the scenic Hudson River. As a former history teacher, I had always wanted to visit here. Many of the early colonists and explorers believed that the Hudson River was the gateway to the interior of North America. We drove to Phoenicia, New York, which is right in the middle of the Catskills, where we, where we would stay at the Phoenicia Lodge. After dinner, we walked down to the Esopus River and admired the view against the backdrop of the Catskill Mountains. The next day, we drove to West Point to see the United States Military Academy. When we got to the visitor center, we saw a very breathtaking sight out the large window where the mountains appeared to go right down into the Hudson River. We took the bus tour and it was excellent. We saw the West Point Cathedral, saw many beautiful stone buildings and many statues to famous cadets such as Grant, MacArthur, Eisenhower and Pershing. We got to see an outdoor display that was made up of part of the chain that was strung across the Hudson River during the American Revolution to keep ships out. After lunch, we toured the West Point Museum made up of many artifacts, one including General MacArthur's bathrobe with an A on it for Army. We drove down south of West Point to see the ruins of Fort Montgomery, which was an American fort that was captured by the British in the Revolution. After that, we drove up the east side of the Hudson and ate dinner in Poughkeepsie, New York. Here we walked across the Hudson River on an old elevated railroad bridge, which is now a pedestrian bridge and part of the Empire State Trail. On day three of our trip, we drove to Tannersville, New York in the Catskills to hike down to Caterskill Falls. These waterfalls are the highest two-tiered waterfalls in the state of New York. A pretty steep climb down, but we just hung out there for a while and took it all in. Took some pictures, had our lunch. We took our time going back up the trail. It's hard to believe that my All Trails app rated this as an easy hike. It was a beautiful place though and worth the hike. The weather was fantastic, probably in the low to mid 70s. Don't really want to go back to a Florida summer.
Day four of our trip had us waking up to a cool 49 degrees. We left the Phoenicia Lodge to go visit the home of Franklin Delano Roosevelt in Hyde Park, New York. We got to tour the home and see the view of the Hudson Valley. We decided to stay and visit the FDR Museum. Many interesting things to see, including FDR's braces when he had polio, an original piece of the battleship Arizona that was sunk in an attack on Pearl Harbor, FDR's cape that he wore at the Yalta Conference, and several models from FDR's model ship collection, among other things. It was a very worthwhile visit. I didn't always agree with FDR's politics, but I had to admire him for getting the United States through the Great Depression and World War II while battling polio at the same time. We drove on along the Hudson to our next Airbnb spot in Troy, New York. We woke up the next morning to an awesome breakfast prepared by our Airbnb host, Charles. Fresh, yummy apple cake. Mm -hmm. Charles had fixed up this 200-year-old red brick building known as the Sarah Whitman House into a fine Airbnb. After breakfast, we drove to the Saratoga National Battlefield Park. The Battle of Saratoga was considered the turning point of the American Revolution, and I had always wanted to see it. Here we saw many sweeping views across the Hudson Valley where the battle took place. Despite turning traitor later on, Benedict Arnold distinguished himself here and led a charge against the British. We drove just north of here to a large monument that featured all of the heroes of Saratoga on each side, Schuyler, Morgan, Gates, and Arnold. Because Arnold became a traitor to the cause, you will see that his statue is not there. On the way back to Troy, we stopped and looked over Canal Lock Number 2, which was a part of the historic Erie Canal.
On day six of our New York trip, we drove out to the town of Herkimer to take a short cruise on the historic Erie Canal. The cruise really gave us a feel for what it was like to travel on the canal. The narrator and captain of the boat gave us, a, gave us great information about the canal and its history. I knew that the canal literally transformed the history of New York City and made it into one of the nation's largest ports. We got to go through a lock and lowered some 20 feet to the next level. We also saw several places where there were huge green gates that could be lowered closing off the canal in case of flooding. It started raining on our way back, but we had good weather for most of the trip. We headed back to Troy and our host provided us with dinner. On to another adventure tomorrow. Our last day at Troy, New York, we drove up north of Saratoga Springs to the Grant Cottage, where Ulysses S. Grant spent the last days of his life writing his memoirs. This place was on McGregor Mountain in the foothills of the Adirondacks. It had been part of a larger hotel where many of New York's wealthy people came in the summer. The cottage had many original artifacts, including the original floral arrangements from Grant's memorial service. We walked out a short path and looked over the Adirondacks where we would be headed the next day. From the Grant Cottage, we headed over to the town of Fort Edward, which had been the site of a large British fort during the French and Indian War. We walked around the Rogers Island Visitor Center and Museum, which had a lot of really neat displays, including large models of what the original fort looked like. 
This is where Robert Rogers started his Rangers unit and became the forerunner of the U.S. Army Rangers. Anyone today who wants to be a part of the elite U.S. Army Rangers unit has to read and study Robert Rogers' 19 standing orders for guerrilla warfare. Pretty neat stuff. We drove back to the Canal Lock 6 State Park and saw where the Erie Canal branched off from the Mohawk River. Days 8 and 9 of our trip saw us leaving the Sarah Whitman House in Troy, New York and traveling to our cabin in Keene, New York, which is located in the High Peaks region of the Adirondacks. It was a rainy day and a cloudy day, so kind of hard to see the mountains as we got closer. We stopped and had some lunch in Lake George and got to the cabin in the afternoon, a really neat place with original logs and a screened-in front porch. The cabin is right across from the Aw Sable River, and the water was running pretty fast because of all the recent rains. The next day, we explored around and walked down to a footbridge that went over the Aw Sable River. Absolutely gorgeous weather, with temperatures around the high 60s to low 70s. Saw lots of beautiful scenery along the river and many beautiful flowers. That night, we went to the 46th restaurant in Keene, named for the 46 high peaks in the Adirondacks. We drove out a little ways towards Lake Placid and then came back for an evening campfire. The next day proved to be an extra special day. We drove down to the Word of Life Bible Institute and camp on Scroon Lake, New York, where our friends the Morrises are ministering for the summer. They gave us a tour of the Bible camp and the Institute, a great Christian camp for kids to attend. We saw some great views of the camp and saw the island in the middle of the lake where the youth camp was located. I guess if you get homesick, you're stuck. We all took a hike to a pretty place with the mountains looking over a lake and then went to get some ice cream. I had told Clayton and Duncan we would, and I keep my promises. We drove to the ruins of an old manor that was on Scroon Lake that was popular from the 1920s to the 1960s. Many famous entertainers from New York City played there, and a movie was made there called Marjorie Morningstar. We went to dinner at a place called Sticks and Stones and said our goodbyes and headed back to Keene. It was a real blessing to be with Greg, Tara, Clayton, and Duncan Morris, and I know their ministry to youth will have a great impact for years to come. Stay tuned for the next video, part two of our upstate New York trip.